Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about CSS. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, I am a developer who I guess can be considered a backend developer. I write mostly, I write some UIs in Qt, but no actual web UIs. I'm working in my own time on building out a website and I've never really done any serious CSS and website design. It seems very daunting to me. Do you think I should try to attempt this with either vanilla CSS or some kind of framework or just something like Bootstrap? I would use Bootstrap, Tailwind, uh, Foundation, like there's some milli, I honestly I don't don't uh, limit yourself to just the things that I said because literally any CSS framework will do the job for you. If you don't, if you're if you're looking to make a nice looking application, something that I, that uh, is well designed, works well visually, and so forth, uh, and you're not so concerned with maximum customization if that makes sense I mean if you're just doing this in your own time and you don't really have any designers so you don't have any of your own design thoughts on how things should look then using a framework you just do it immediately the work has been done for you so I'm one of those people who will say like I am of the mind that the choices that you make in terms of tooling should be considered uh, in the context of what you're trying to do. And what that basically means is that if you have considerations, think about those considerations before you pick the tool. And when you're dealing with, say, a customer, or if you're working at an IT company like myself, like I, I do and most of my, <laughs> all of my coworkers, one thing to know about using a CSS framework is that although it is saving you time in it's also going to cost you time in a different pr from a different perspective. Uh, what I mean by that is basically that the uh, like the CSS framework, it is a time saver and a great benefit to you as long as you can use most of it as is. Because basically what you're doing is that you are allowing somebody else to set your design language, your uh, the visual language that you have. And sure, you can tweak and modify it, but if you then have a company or a customer or a designer who has a lot of thoughts on a custom look and feel, it's really tricky for you to retrofit that into a CSS framework sometimes. I mean, I've uh, at one point before we had things like CSS Grid and Flexbox and so forth, and uh, it, it was very common that people thought that doing layouts was a complicated thing. So a lot of companies, who, and I, a lot of products still do, use something like Bootstrap for the grid system so that you could have a responsive grid system. And uh, honestly, like, uh, I used, used to use it as well at one company. And even by just doing that simple, simple thing, I had issues because I had a designer who wanted a custom grid uh, gap layout system. And at the time that was not supported. So I had massive problems doing what the designer wanted to. Now, I, of course, now in my old age, I realized that I should have just told the designer, dude, this is a technical decision that was made. These are the limitations you have to design around it because I can't make this work for you because I basically have to re remove all of the benefits of the framework that is saving us time and then reinvest that time uh, doing it manually, which is a thing that I argue that if you have skilled front-end developers and you have a lot of or uh, currently or upcoming, if you suspect that this is going to happen, custom requirements on the the design that you're making, then I usually prefer to say don't use a framework because, as I said, all you're doing is that you're right now taking what somebody else made for you and then you're going to have to undo all that work or change it or tweak it somehow based on somebody else's requirements. But I love to use CSS frameworks whenever I don't have a designer, I don't have any real custom needs, I just need something that looks good and honest to God, I think that if you're doing your own thing, if you're doing a prototype, or if you're doing something for a small company, like where there's not that much in terms of, like they don't really have a company branding strategy or anything like that, this is using a CSS framework is like the way to go. 
because you if you're not into design and you're not like I, I try it this is I, it's something that I like to tell people when they keep on underestimating how difficult UI design is design is hard guys making things look uh, good is actually very difficult so if you have a CSS framework that has done all that work for you sure it's your site is gonna look like a hundred thousand other sites but that doesn't matter for your customer usually if they don't they don't have any requirements and if it's just for you or you're doing something yourself then go for it I mean there are some very serious products that are using things like bootstrap for example uh, to great effect I mean it still looks good even though you don't you you might not have a completely custom look and feel. I'll actually like to, I still have that uh, even to this day. I can almost immediately spot when I go to a site and I see, oh, yeah, that's a bootstrap uh, button style or like that's the bootstrap color and like the, the shape and so forth. You kind of get like this. Yeah, I think this is using bootstrap with some tweaks here and there. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you don't have an interest in vanilla CSS or like doing design and so forth. I don't. I th and you're thinking about using a framework. I think that you should think about it this way. Number one, what are you prioritizing? What is the most important thing? Because if speed and simplicity, and like a good look and feel, is what you're looking for, then use a CSS framework. They're made for this thing, and they're really, really simple to use. They, they're. It's going to save you so much time and it's gonna look better than what most of us can design ourselves if we're like software developers and not designers. And it's just really a, a fast way for you to get something to look good without a lot of work. However, consider that if you do have a lot of customization requirements, think about it just how m much those or customizations will differ from the thing that you get from the CSS framework. Because if you use the CSS framework, remember, the CSS, the, the framework is using certain styles and certain patterns and so, so forth. And as long as your customization only maybe tweaks a few of those things, then it's fine because you don't have to co be concerned that there's going to be something that isn't compatible. But I prefer, considering that we have Flexbox, we have CSS Grid, and we have a lot of other things that we didn't use to have, to re avoid using a CSS framework if I know that I have a lot of opinions from stakeholders and designers and a lot of company branding, things like that, uh, to consider. Because if they come in and say, hey, we need you to make this thing look like this, and that that's going to be a problem, then I'm going to have to throw away all the benefits that I got from the CSS framework. And in many cases, it's going to take me more time uh, if than if I just didn't use it and I went all vanilla. But that is just how I think about it. Have a great day.